Hi everyone, welcome to Science Tutorial for you. In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw ionic bonding. Ionic bonding happens between metals and non-metals. The metal will lose electron and the non-metals will gain electrons. And this is done in order to have full outer shell of electrons. When the metal lose electrons, it become into a positive ion, whereas the non-metal atoms become into a negative ion. This positive and negative ion have attraction, and this attraction is called ionic bonding. I'm going to draw two ionic compounds, which are sodium chloride and magnesium oxide. For sodium, if you take a look at the atomic number in the periodic table, it's 11. So the proton number is 11, so therefore the electron number is also 11. Now the electron number is important because we have to write the electron arrangement. For sodium, it is 2, 8, 1. So from this electron arrangement, we can see that sodium has one electron in the outer shell. If you do the same thing for chlorine, the number of electron is 17. So electron arrangement is 2, 8, Seven. You can find the number of electron in the outer shell without writing the electron arrangement and that is done by looking at the group. Sodium is found in group 1, so it has one electron in the outer shell. Chlorine is found in group 7, so it has seven electrons in the outer shell. To draw ionic bonding, the number of electrons in the outer shell are very important. So sodium has one electron in the outer shell and chlorine has seven electrons in the outer shell. For sodium, in order to have a full outer shell of electrons, the sodium is going to lose the one electron in the outer shell. And this electron is going to be transferred to the chlorine. Because chlorine has seven electrons in the outer shell, so it needs one more electron in order to have full outer shell. So sodium, which was 281, now has become 28 because it has lost the electron. So now I'm just going to draw the second shell. And since he has lost one electron, now it is a positive ion. Chlorine, which was 287, now has become 288. And the reason is because he has gained one electron. This is the electron from the sodium. Since chlorine has extra electron, it has become negative ion, so minus. This positive sodium and this negative chlorine ions have attraction, and the attraction between them is the ionic bond. For sodium chloride, there was only one electron being transferred, but sometimes two electrons has to be transferred to have full outer shell of electrons. And, and a good example of this will be MgO. Magnesium oxide. Magnesium has 12 electrons. So, electron arrangement is 2, A, 2. Whereas oxygen has 8 electrons in total. So, electron arrangement is 2, 6. And if you look in the periodic table, magnesium is found in group 2. So, it has 2 electrons in the outer shell and whereas oxygen is found in group 6 so it has 6 electron in the outer shell. So let's draw these atoms. Magnesium has 2 electron in the outer shell so in order to have full shell it has to lose these 2 electron 
so the second shell will become full. And if oxygen gained two electron, it will have eight electron in the outer shell. So this two electron from magnesium will be transferred. So this atom become into these ions. What was 2A2 has become 2A because two electron has been lost. Now the second shell contain a full shell of eight electrons. It was 2 6, two electron has been gained, so that becomes 2 8. And the cross represent that this electron come from the magnesium. All right, we know that magnesium has become a positive ion because he has lost electron. And oxygen has become into a negative ion because it has gained electron. But since he has gained two electron, oxygen become minus two. And magnesium become plus two. And we have to also write over here. It's a common mistake for student to miss out those two. So watch out for that one. You can also draw ionic bonding without drawing the basic atoms and simply jumping into these. You can do it. But if you are starting out on this topic, then I will recommend you to draw both the normal atoms and the ion together. And once you get enough practice, then you can just simply draw this. So this is how you draw ionic bonding. And I hope this video was helpful. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share. And I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much.